This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Health One. So we had this case, and uh, it was a little hard to get a complete history. It seemed like the most focal reason she was there was she had like a fall at work and hit her head. But then we find out she's probably pregnant, and then we're like, well, how's this... Uh, preeclampsia, she has no, you know, no idea how far along she is, I guess, and then, oh yeah, I guess I've had some abdominal pain too. So, interestingly enough, the abdominal pain was like her least focal complaint, but the most interesting part of her medical workup. The ultrasound, you know, so trying to get dates and everything else, we get this ultrasound, and you guys are welcome to like look at this or pass this around, but if you're, if you're doing a lot of OB ultrasounds, it's easy to kind of look at that and you see this big black circle and it's a gestational sac, you're like, okay, that looks pretty good. Um, and you could do a quick pass and just say, okay, it's intrauterine. I see uterine tissue around it. We're done. The, fortunately, it was like a formal ultrasound and the text like, eh, it looks a little bit low, kind of a lower uterine segment, but even that still can be kind of normal, but it also could be technically an ectopic or outside of the, where it needs to be. And so the, and then the, uh, radiologist calls and says, you know, I'm actually kind of concerned. It looks like it might be placenta accreta. You might need to actually get an MRI for that, but that's not really an ER workup. We don't really need an MRI for that. But something's still kind of weird about it. We talked to OB, and OB, without even looking anything off the cuff, is like, I don't know, I'd probably just get the MRI to make sure it's not a cesarean scar uh, ectopic. And then that's exactly what it was. So if you guys look at the MRI, we'll pass this one around too. I know we don't all read MRIs very often, but there's this white circle right there. And if you look next to it, you can see the uterus around it coming down to the cervix. But in front of it, there's really not much much uterine tissue wall. And so the look at that is kind of the, the front is on the left of the page. And so it, it's the, the scar from the previous cesarean section goes through the uterus, and then that's where the uh, fetus had implanted. And so it's interesting that it, it goes right there. You know, it's, you know the, the pathophysiology is they've had a previous scar there. There's probably some kind of microfissure or fistula that can allow it to implant in there, but obviously that's not gonna sustain you know, a, growing, a growing child there. So she had to come in, she didn't want a hysterectomy, and the treatment they did was a combination of IM methotrexate as well as implanting methotrexate directly at the site, hoping that it'll help. Pretty much all treatment options are not great um, in a you know, section like this, especially if they wanna try to preserve future fertility. Um, they can try to go in and just do a wedge resection of that area of uterus and then kind of close things again. Probably the safest thing is a hysterectomy, but you know, somebody who uh, doesn't want that option, that's understandable as well to be kind of nervous about it, such a permanent decision. So interesting that I've never seen, it seems like most people have not seen cases like this, but in the data they say it's like one in 2,000. I swear I've seen way more than 2,000 pregnancies. Uh, so I don't know, uh, that's, that's what's reported is one in 2,000 pregnancies have that. So. Um, and maybe you know, spontaneous miscarriages, other things happen from, from that site anyway. So uh, it's something to be aware of, and sometimes those quick, real you know, fast bedside ultrasounds we do could be misleading, and especially in somebody like this with such a squirrely history and really not much abdominal pain, I think it would be very easy to miss. So it's kind of props to our PA for being diligent on uh, following all that stuff up. So that's it. We are on a quest to provide the world with free medical education. Please help us out by rating us on iTunes, following us on social media, and subscribing to our newsletter at emergencymedicalminute.com.